Well, hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Wildy Garden. My first live, I say live, you're watching this live obviously, but my first recorded, shall we say, video of 2023. And how good it is to have you along. Thank you so much for joining me once again. And if you're new to the channel, please consider hitting the subscribe button and the bell notification and then you will be informed every time i upload a new video because there will be lots of cool stuff to come i assure you and for those of you that are returning to the channel that have supported me for a long time thank you so much for coming back it's a pleasure to have you with me and i cannot wait to bring you some of the projects that i've got lined up for 2023 and alongside that if you haven't seen already on the channel, my first video I technically published this year was my highlights of 2022, which was just a blast. 2022 was an incredible year that just took me from here to everywhere, basically. Go check it out for yourself. I won't spoil it for you. It really was a fantastic year, and obviously a lot of it was supported by you guys. The encouragement and the comments that kept me going through some pretty wet, windy, cold times, so I really appreciate it, and do check that out. Like I say, I'll put a link to that video at the end of this one. But in this video, we're here to talk about the best native shrubs you can put, or native plants you can put, in a hedgerow if you're planning a hedgerow. And not only that, if you're only looking to put a few individual shrubs dotted through your garden, then this is the video for you. All about the natives, non-natives, and another video to come, and I should say, before we go any further, guys, I have a new feature on the channel. If at any point you feel like supporting the work that I do and the videos that I produce for you guys at the end of the day, then please find just below each and every video now where you've got share, clip, and all those sort of things, find a little button that says thanks. If you click on that, you can actually donate straight to the Wild Your Garden channel, which helps me in all the camera equipment, in all my travel, in everything, and the time to edit these videos and reply to your comments, which I absolutely love. So don't stop doing that, but it just helps run all of that, which is a hell of a process. And uh, I can assure you, it's a very, very satisfying one to be able to see exactly what you guys and hear exactly what you guys are doing for wildlife in your own garden so it's an absolute pleasure stay in touch as i say if you do at any point you don't have to give any amount whatsoever of course but if you do fancy it there are differing levels when you click on that thanks you'll see if you do want to support the channel and donate as a one-off or if you're interested in regular then do get in touch it's a feature that i will be thinking about introducing to the channel just to help as i say with the upkeep of it throughout this year but don't worry if you don't do anything other than hit that subscribe button which is just absolutely free you would of course still be able to watch all of my content so without further ado let's have a look at some of the best native shrubs for your garden so before we get into the 10 species or more it might end up being 11 or 12 by the end of this video the best species you can plant i ought to say guys that if you're looking for any of the bare root shrubs that i mentioned today and by bare root i mean that is a plant usually 40 to 60 centimeters long without the soil on the bottom so they're bare root at this time of year because they're in their dormant phase and they will be in this state until sort of february march time so you can plant these plants right the way through up until the end of march sorry about the background noise uh, unfortunately i'm not far from the flight path to south end airport so <laughs> You have to bear with me. Anyway, like I say, if you're looking to buy them, check out wildyourgarden.com. We now have a specialist pack that you guys can buy in a minimum quantity of 10 or more. Unfortunately, just because they're the cost they are and the size they are, um, it's not really viable for us to sell less than 10, but maybe you can share some with your friends. And I'd recommend buying them in a minimum quantity of two per shrub if you're including them in a hedgerow or sort of two per block, if you like. So two hawthorn, two hazel, etc., etc. Um, so you can get up to five species um, in a pack of 10, and I think they really are good. In terms of the spacing of them, I would always recommend uh, anywhere between 30 to 50 centimeters apart if you're doing a single row, and the same if you're doing a double row. Obviously, it will be a lot denser hedgerow, but a single row of 30 to centimeter spacings. To be honest, two per meter is probably enough. It enables them to grow into nice big bushy specimens but it depends whether you're planting them for providing um, stock cover for, you know, sheeps or uh, sheeps, sheep or anything like that, or whether you are just there for the wildlife. Generally, garden setting, two per meter should be absolutely fine. 
Um, so minimum order of 10 if you can guys and obviously let me know with your specific requirements. We can of course help you out. Drop us an email inquiries at wildyourgarden.com. So yes check out the shop if you're in the UK we can ship to you. So let's have a look at what some of the best plants to plant are going to be. Oh and one last thing before we go any further guys I was just going to say if you have any queries regarding uh, rabbits or protecting your whips when they go in the ground we are now offering the um, spirals and the canes to support these plants and obviously protect them from rabbits should that be an issue within your garden. So at number one and these are in no particular order these are just a list as I say of native shrubs that I think will absolutely benefit your garden in the northern hemisphere. Obviously I'm here in the UK and things will differ slightly in the States of course you'll have shrubs that I don't mention which no doubt you'll inform me are just as good for wildlife but here we're talking about shrubs that you can find in the UK and shall we say some in the States and more importantly not importantly but probably more uh, specific to Europe where they are an absolute benefit for wildlife. So number one hazel absolutely brilliant plant one that I would never ever consider building a garden without including they are just fantastic they are just at the moment coming into flower and producing the lovely catkins which of course turn these lovely dead stems of the hazel into these kind of hanging almost lime green blocks of vegetation at this time of year looking absolutely wonderful just coming out here in the south of the UK but they are so good for so many things you can obviously coppice them so the wood from these coppices creates great brash stacks logs for habitat and they'll come back year after year and obviously for previous uh, see previous videos for the the way in which you can coppice and manage some of these shrubs I'll put a link into one of those videos at the end of this one because it will of course no doubt be crossing your mind as to how you manage some of these habitats but again we're talking about the best shrub species here in terms of a hedgerow particularly not specifically but particularly a hedgerow where you might be looking to create a new boundary down one side of your garden to hide that ugly fence which is uh, a very good thing you can do of course so hazel really good um, because you've got early flowers that are coming out now we're sort of not even into mid january yet and there's tiny tiny little flowers that are emerging on these hazels now um, they will create good nesting potential and they will of course provide the nuts in the autumn and the winter months for many mammals and other animals so a really really good one hazel and so many associated insects with the uh, the leaves with the larvae things like moths moth larvae in particular very very good in terms of that so number one hazel so number two hawthorn absolute staple product of a hedge they really really are fantastic hawthorn they have the most associated insects apart from oak trees in terms of a hedgerow not that you'd really plant many oaks in a hedgerow but they they can be trimmed as a hedge um, they are absolutely wonderful they provide dense spiky thorny cover for nesting birds a lot of birds will use them so they're great cover against uh, protection against cats squirrels squirrels of course will take eggs and chicks of many many species of bird um, along with obviously the sparrowhawks which will predate birds so it's good cover for them and a lot of carrion as well things like magpies carrion crows um, ravens if you're fortunate enough enough to have them but less likely they'll visit your garden unless it's of some acreage um, so and I'm not trying to discourage any of these birds into your garden but the, it does of course give our breeding birds the best chance if you've got nice dense cover the thicker the cover the denser it is the harder it is for things like sparrowhawks to get in and magpies to take the eggs and the chicks so hawthorn a really good one obviously if let to flower they will be an absolute wealth of nectar and pollen for so many insects traditionally known as the may blossom and i have done a video on the channel all about the benefits of hawthorn on its own so do check that out but in this video it's just a brief summary so hawthorn really good one and of course the berries in the autumn which at the moment we've still got red wings um, and field fares and our thrush species blackbirds in particular going around and eating all the remaining berries before they head back to scandinavia in a, in a month or two's time so Hawthorne number two, absolutely brilliant. I strongly recommend it for your garden. Number three, Holly. I just can't express how fantastically great it is 
that I, when I see a holly hedge, I just absolutely love it. I don't know why, it's just probably the evergreen element. I, and because it's not something I see a lot of, because I think a lot of people think holly, it's slow growing, and it's not really included in a lot of mixtures that I see on kind of industrial sites or big supermarket car parks, um, which it really should be, because although it's not very quick growing, when it establishes, it's absolutely brilliant. It just looks the part, similar to you, which is a plant that we'll come on to. But the holly absolutely is a fantastic plant for a hedgerow, and again, can be very good at providing dense nesting cover evergreen as well so of course it gives you some color all throughout the year and in the spring it provides the um, flowers and the berries for a lot of insects uh, but of course uh, I am slightly biased towards butterflies so if let to flower it will be a viable food source larval food plant for the holly blue as I'm sure many of you are already aware where the butterflies will come and lay their eggs on the developing flower buds which is absolutely brilliant to see. I've got tons of these butterflies in my garden. They are cyclical every seven years due to a parasitic wasp. Story for another day. But a wonderful butterfly that you can easily attract to your garden if you're not too far north throughout the country. And Scotland, they, for example, they don't exist that far north. But the holly blue, a really good butterfly to attract to your garden if you can let these plants flower. So holly, really good one for your hedge line. Number four. Blackthorn. Now, I know a lot of you will immediately say, no, don't do it. Spreads by runners. It'll create a massive vegetation. Which, yes, which, yes, if it is left not managed in any way, it will do. It will create a lovely expanding clump of vegetation. And if you look at hedgerows, for example, along the edge of an embankment on a motorway, quite often you'll see a lovely perfect straight line, then a block that seems to just spread down the bank. That's more often than not blackthorn because it spreads by runners and suckers that will come up in your lawn or wherever you want so just bear that in mind but you can of course pull them out it doesn't take too much work and they are a really really brilliant brilliant plant not only do they provide very good dense nesting very sticky habitat for birds which is really good for them to nest in as i say they also provide one of the earliest flowering opportunities for our early emerging insects things like um, the peacock butterfly, the small tortoiseshell butterfly, which will overwinter as adults, and obviously any early emerging bees as well. So the flowers are absolutely brilliant for providing that early source of nectar. From the sort of end of February time, you can expect them to be in flower, and they're really, really brilliant. Then later on as well, obviously they have the slow berries, and again, which uh, the, the the blackthorn I have done an individual video on as well. So check that out full list of benefits but the slow berries in the autumn obviously loved by a lot of birds as well so number four blackthorn i strongly recommend some for your hedge number five field maple now this one is a strong contender for hedging plant of the year for me it is absolutely brilliant it might not have the characteristics of the blackthorn for example in producing a wonderfully brilliant white bouquet of flowers early on in the year but it has an incredible end to the year it really does look fabulous right when the leaves are about to drop and they go this very vivid yellow color plenty of playing activity today so the leaves look absolutely brilliant in the autumn time and obviously there's a lot of associated insects with field maple as well in terms of a larval food plant again when clipped it does create a really nice trimmed neat dense hedge so a really good option for your wildlife hedge, shall we say. So field maple, a really good one. It does layer very well. So if you're looking to lay an existing hedgerow, it will sucker back up. You know what it's like trying to get rid of a sycamore. The Acer family in general sucker very well from being cut right back to the ground. So a really good one and one, one that I would strongly recommend for your hedge line. Number six, Gelder Rose. Now, it might not be one that you've heard of, but it really is a cracking plant. Now, Gelder Rose is not perhaps quite as it sounds in terms of its appearances. It is, in fact, actually 
uh, a wonderful plant that doesn't have any thorns in it whatsoever. It doesn't look like a dog rose and it really is a great plant for providing a wonderful white bouquet, a bit like a wild carrot flower if you're familiar with those. Um, in the springtime it really is a great source of nectar and pollen for a lot of insects and later on the berries of which turn into this gorgeous bright red like a bit of a red currant so it's a very delicious snack for a lot of animals and in the autumn time the leaves go this gorgeous kind of um, yellows and oranges and reds so they are a really nice addition to a bit of autumn interest in your garden so a really good one as well and they have a lot of moth species associated with them in terms of the larval food plant as well it provides a lot of uh, food from the leaves so you can be invaded a little bit somewhat you can lose a lot of the leaf during the summer months by the moths but it's all part of it it will grow back it won't kill the plant off so it is a really really vital element i would say in terms of a wildlife hedge so number six gelder rose number seven beach what country estate would be complete without a well-clipped and well-maintained beech hedgerow they look absolutely fantastic and the beauty of them is i think is that they retain a lot of their leaf through the winter months so they look really nice they have this lovely kind of russet brown color which is really really great i think as a bit of an interest and they are really nice again they can create a nice dense clipped hedge in time they are a little bit slow growing like the holly but they create a really nice formal addition to the hedge not so much an interest in terms of the flowers um, and the the beach mass if you like which we can often find littering the ground in the autumn time because they generally won't do that unless they are um, given a chance to grow to their full potential but they are equally a really really good plant and one that I think you should definitely have in your wildlife hedge. And very similar to the beach we have number eight which is the hornbeam which looks absolutely brilliant again the leaf is very similar in the fact that it retains uh, the hedge retains a proportion of the leaves through the winter months so they do create and again another nice formal element and a little bit of color and interest a little bit more kind of habitat for overwintering ladybirds that sort of thing so a really good one for your hedgerow as well and they can be a really nice addition because they're they're just that bit that little bit different from a beech leaf the edges of the hornbeam leaves are slightly sort of serrated on the edge so a little bit more incest slightly more ribbed and they are a very very nice specimen to look at indeed so number eight hornbeam number nine dogwood now dogwood is one of my favorite shrubs because it's absolutely brilliant at growing in wet conditions clay conditions shady conditions it really really is a great shrub can provide a really nice source of flowers in terms of the nectar and the pollen nectar and pollen available in the spring and also a nice source of berries as well so a really really good one if you can add it to your collection and it will create some nice clumps as well so it will spread a little bit if left to its own devices but a really good one for a hedgerow and as i say will cope with a lot of difficult and tricky conditions where a lot of other plants would not thrive so number nine dogwood number 10 wild privet one of my all-time favorite hedgerow plants wild privet really is great for so many reasons firstly it creates as i'm sure you're all aware from using the or seeing the kind of garden center varieties of wild privet which are not quite as good as the true wild privet um, it really does create a nice dense screening if you let it and you clip it repeatedly but of course the downside to which is it doesn't flower as much and therefore it's questionable if it's as good for wildlife and the way to manage these hedgerows I would say at this point is to almost do it on a rotation so do it every other year or do the top one year and the side the next year just so you've always got something flowering and burying because otherwise if you just cut it back in the autumn every year you're going to wipe out all the source of berries in the autumn months if you're doing it that time of year you do it in the spring you wipe out all the flowers for the insects so yes if you can do them on a rotation but wild privet is great because it provides a kind of a semi 
evergreen appearance again all year round so for privacy for a windbreak it's very very good and also the flowers of which smell fantastic a lot of people don't like them but i think they smell really great um, they're like a mini white lilac flower and they're really really good for our peak summer insects so a lot of the butterflies things such as gatekeeper speckled wood uh, meadow brown will all use the wild privet as a source of nectar in the summer months so wild privet absolutely fantastic word of advice though don't eat the berries like i did as a child else you'll be swiftly finding yourself in hospital in a and e and having your stomach pumped or being given tablets to make you throw up because <laughs> i thought i'd make one of those pies you make as a kid and uh, well actually it was the neighbor um, who had a bit of an influence on me at the time and said oh try these berries joel they'll do you a world of good yeah sadly i believed her anyway <laughs> that was when i was knee high to a grasshopper so Yes, don't eat the berries, I would say, <laughs> of the wild privet. It won't do you any good whatsoever. But do put the wild privet in your garden. It creates a fantastic, brilliant hedge line in its own right. Even if you just had a row of wild privet and you let it go, it's absolutely brilliant. So number 10, wild privet. Number 11, um, I'm kind of cheating a little bit. I'm, I'm merging two together because it can cause a little bit of confusion. It is older buckthorn or common buckthorn, I'll say or older buckthorn and common buckthorn, which are both brilliant plants, both the larval food plant of the brimstone butterfly. The older buckthorn does better in wetter conditions and the common buckthorn does better in calcareous conditions. So soil types that are more limestone, chalkland or limestone, sorry, limestone grassland, chalk, chalk grassland, um, those are what's known as calcareous soils it will do better in those but if you've got a, a damper conditions or clay soils then the older buckthorn is better for you and they provide a brilliant source of nectar for bees as well in the spring i've seen them absolutely alive with bees at the right time of year and as i say the larval food plant the sole larval food plant these two plants for the brimstone butterfly that brilliant sulfur yellow butterfly that you see zooming past in sort of march april time one of the first butterflies you see to emerge certainly here in the uk no doubt on the continent as well one of my absolute favorites the harbingers of spring questionable with the orange tip but for me they are an absolutely brilliant addition to our countryside at the right time of year which well, let's be honest they could turn up they have been recorded every month of the year one of the few butterflies that have been recorded every single month of the year in here in the uk so a really great addition so the older buckthorn will encourage the brimstones and the common buckthorn will also encourage, encourage the brimstones into your garden so i strongly recommend them as a hedgerow plant and the berries as well later on also provide a good source of food for many many creatures Number 12, I'm going to stop using my fingers for counting, um, is the elder. Now, I bet you didn't see that one coming. Now, elder is a fantastic hedgerow plant because it's almost indestructible. It, you, could, you know what it's like. It's like trying to cut down a laurel um, that's growing up out of the crack of your drive or something like that. Elders, you just almost cannot kill them, which is a good thing, I think. And I've recently done a video back in kind of the end of summer, early autumn last year, on elders and the importance of them so do check that out i think they're such an underrated plant because they provide so much pollen and nectar in the springtime sort of may time for so many insects along with an absolute plethora of berries in the autumn i counted on one small bush that was about eight to nine feet tall um, i averaged at about uh, it was something around about fifteen thousand berries on one bush in the countryside so they are prolific fruiters and really really tasty snack even chub and many other fish species will eat them if they drop into a river um, so they are really really fantastic at providing so much food for so much life and obviously mammals as well mice and all that sort of thing so they're really really brilliant and the insects as well wasps as we know are attracted to rotting fruit along with many of the late emerging butterflies second broods in particular things like sort of red admirals commas um, speckled wood that sort of thing so a really really brilliant plant elder i strongly recommend one for your hedgerow or encourage them as an individual tree again all of these species guys you could plant as individual specimens therefore you will get the maximum out of them in terms of the flower and the fruit and they're all designed to be coppice back if you do nothing else but coppice them 
and that's cutting them off at ground level every three to five years you will absolutely reap the benefits and they will come back without doubt so yes number 12 elder get some in your hedge number 13 dog rose now dog rose a little bit questionable as to whether it's a it's a hedgerow um, plant in terms of creating a hedgerow in itself but dog rose is such a wonderful and linked in with field rose they're, they're very similar in terms of the flower one is more pinky one is more whitey but they're very very similar dog rose field rose they are absolutely brilliant because they sort of ramble through a hedge and they then provide an absolute incredible source of food for particularly our bees when the flowers emerge in my back garden and it's about 12 13 foot tall and it's an absolute pink bouquet in may time just before the winds come and knock all the flowers off about two days after it started flowering but it's absolutely full of flowers in the springtime and therefore berries again in the autumn and again the thorns of which are very good at providing cover for nesting birds protecting them from any kind of predators whether that be as we've already said any of the corvids the magpies carrion crows or squirrels cats sparrowhawks you know these smaller songbirds in particular have a very hard time of raising a brood of chicks so all the help we can give them the better i say and do check out the channel as well i would say if you're looking to build any nest boxes then i have done previous videos on how to make blue tit great tit um robin all sorts of nest boxes on the channel so have a look at some of those videos if you haven't already bat boxes as well slightly off topic but it's all part of the same umbrella of wildlife garden isn't it so yes dog rose another brilliant addition to your hedge i'd strongly recommend it be warned it will grow like wildfire it is absolutely fantastic at establishing and growing and outpacing a lot of other plants. so be warned but it's well well worth the efforts of a little bit of light pruning now and again number 14 spindle now spindle is such a beautiful shrub and it's not one that creates incredibly dense um, cover for birds shall we say but it has these gorgeous pink and orange flowers and berries at the end of summer which are absolutely second to none so a really good one and it has this quite unique green stem which i absolutely love about it and it's also very good in terms of growing in shade so if you've got um, quite a shady patch spindle will really be your ally in terms of providing some vegetation that will successfully grow there and give you a bit of something to look at so number 14 spindle i strongly recommend some and last but not least and yes there are other species we could include in this mix and i could go on all day but this is my kind of top 15 if you like but stick around because in a moment i'll give you a couple of tips as to what else you can plant in your hedgerow to really benefit wildlife but number 15 i would strongly recommend you which actually is quite a slow growing shrub but again it makes the most fantastic formal hedgerows as i'm sure you're aware it's been grown for millennia some of the oldest trees in the world are yew trees and it is an absolutely fantastic plant and can be very very good at creating dense boxy hedging and i'm sure you've seen on your visits around country estates or you know wherever you may have seen them in somebody else's garden some really good um, topiary as well you is used a lot for topiary so can create some really nice clipped shapes and it is just an all-round great plant and birds will eat the berries if let to grow and turn into a, a full fully fledged tree uh, it's the seeds that are actually um, poisonous but they can um, eat the berries fine but yes yew is a brilliant brilliant plant and one that will create a lovely block of evergreen cover so great for roosting birds and also great for nesting birds as well and that is the extensive list of the shrubs that i would recommend there are other things you can include and there no doubt many of you will come back at me and say oh viburnum lantana the wayfaring tree um you you could have crab apple as well which i'm glad you mentioned because there are a few things that you can add into a hedgerow that i'd recommend is and that's a few standalone trees let them come out the top so things like crab apple things like rowan things like silver birch not massive trees but good for a garden setting and the best trees for your garden another video to come so stay tuned for that one but plant them sporadically through your hedgerow five to seven meters apart and you really will get a nice mix you can keep the hedgerow trimmed at a lower height if you want to and then let one or two specimen trees go up above them it really does create a fantastic effect and of course as always guys if you've got any questions do drop them in the comments below 
and thank you very, very much for watching. I really hope today's video has inspired you to go out there and plant some native shrubs in your garden. As I say, they're all available on the Wild Your Garden at, sorry, wildyourgarden.com online shop and uh, do drop us an email on there if you are stuck as to what to get. I am happy to advise so that we can make sure you guys get the most from your wildlife garden. And as always, thank you very, very much for watching. Please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Give the video a like and I'll be sure to bring you many more videos on all the ways in which you can help wildlife in videos to come. I also have lots more cool videos coming up, so I'm, I'm really hoping that over the next week or two I can get some cool content lined up for you guys. Tons and tons and tons of stuff to edit at the moment before I crack on with some of the projects uh, in the early part of February that I've got lined up around the UK and possibly further afield as well. So stay tuned for that. But thank you so much guys as always for the support from King Henry VIII. Make the most of it, it's actually going tomorrow. Well, it's not going, I'd never get rid of my beard, but uh, having a bit of a trim, so <laughs> it won't be quite as bushy as this. I think if I left it another month, I might get a few willow warblers and chiff shafts starting to nest in it, so uh, I better get it trimmed before then. Anyway, from here in a very nice, pleasant, sunny, semi sunny day here in Essex, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned to the channel, and I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.